Hi, and welcome to Rubik's Code video tutorials where we build smart apps. Deepfake videos have entered the mainstream culture. These realistic looking videos in which it appears that someone is doing or saying something even though they didn't went viral a couple of years ago. Today, artists and bands like Steven Wilson and Abrahadabra are using these techniques to build their music videos. Also, applications like Zao, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that well, FaceSwap and Reface are providing an easy way to create deepfake videos, of course, if you are willing to share your information with them. The term itself originates from 2017, when Motherboard published an article about AI-manipulated porn that featured, that actually seemed to feature the actress Gal Gadot. Today, even if you see some celebrity and politician doing and saying something, you will take that with a grain of salt, or at least you should do so. Putting words in someone else's mouth got a completely new connotation. Deepfake videos, of course, raised multiple ethical and moral concerns, which didn't really stop us from improving them and techniques to build them. Creating a deepfake video in the past was not an easy task. However, with recent advances in AI, it became a 5-minute job. In this tutorial, we will explore how deepfake videos are created, and we will use one technique, first-order modeling, to create deepfake videos in a matter of minutes. The main concept behind deepfakes is to use source image and apply motion patterns from a driving video to it. For this purpose, they are usually using some sort of deep learning techniques. And that is where the name comes from, like deep learning plus fakes equal deep fakes. To be more precise, these techniques usually use some sort of autoencoder with some sort of generative algorithm, like generative adversarial neural networks. Autoencoder is a simple neural network that utilizes unsupervised learning or self-supervised learning to be more precise. They are called like that because they automatically encode information and usually are used for dimensionality reduction. It consists of three parts, encoder, code, and decoder. The encoder will process the input, in our case, um, input of a driving frame, and encode it. This means that it transforms information gathered from it into some lower dimensional latent space, the code. In this latent representation, information about key features like facial features and body posture of a video frame is contained. In layman's term, here is where information about what face is doing, does it smile or blink, is stored. The decoder of autoencoder restores this image from the code and uses it for network learning. Generative adversarial networks or GUNs are one very cool deep learning concept. Essentially, they are composed of two networks that are competing against each other. The first network tries to generate images that are similar to the training set, and it is called generator. The second neural network, called discriminator, tries to detect where does the image come from. Does it come from the training set, or it comes from the generator? And the both networks are trying to get better than the other, and as a result we get better generated images. The problem with building deepfakes in the past was that we needed additional information, meaning we needed some kind of priors. If we wanted to map head movements to some source image, we would need the facial landmarks. Or if we wanted to animate full body movement, we would need pose estimation. This all changed last year when the paper First Order Motion Model for Image Animation was released from the team of University of Toronto. With this method, you don't need prior information. And when the model is trained, you can use it with transfer learning for um, and you know apply it to an arbitrary object of the same category. Let's explore a bit how first order motion modeling for image automation works. The whole process is separated into two parts: motion extraction and generation. As an input, the source image and the driving video are used. Motion Extractor utilizes autoencoder to detect key points and extracts first-order motion representation that consists of sparse key points and local affine transformation. 
These, along with the driving video, are used to generate dense optical flow and occlusion map with the dense motion network. Then the output of the dense motion network and the source image are used by the generator to render the target image. This workout performs state-of-the-art on all benchmarks. Apart from that, it has features that other models just don't have. The really cool thing about it is that it works on a different category of images, meaning you can apply it to face, body, cartoon, or something similar. This opens up a lot of similarities. Another revolutionary thing that this approach uh, has is that now you can create good quality deepfakes with a single image on the target object. This is something similar that YOLO did for object detection. If you're having a fast GPU and you want to test how this method works, uh, you can do it on your local environment uh, just by cloning this repo. Uh, this repo is uh, from the author of uh, this paper and uh, there are several, several folders and files that are important for you. Uh, basically, first there is this uh, configuration folder. Here you're having a configuration for different pre-trained models. I will say a little bit more about them in a bit. Uh, also, uh, the interesting thing is this modules folder, which contains uh, implementation of discriminator, generator, the complete model, and the key point detector. So the things we talked about, so you can check them out as well. Uh, in the root, uh, there is a train uh, file in which the training, complete training is done. However, um, you mustn't, you, you, you can use like a pre-trained models, uh, which I'll show in a bit. And uh, the interesting file is demo.py. Uh, in demo.py, the pre-trained model is utilized. And uh, yeah, we'll see how we can call this uh, this file and create our uh, deepfake models. However, before you proceed, uh, you need to download pre-trained model uh, from this location. I will leave it all in the comments of the video. And uh, yeah, we will use this uh, Vox uh, advanced checkpoint. So here we are having uh, information for, uh, you know, uh, creating deep fake videos with faces. So we will use this one and this means that uh, in, uh, in from the configuration we will use uh, this thing. So uh, yeah. So once you downloaded the print train model and uh, put it in the root folder of your repo, uh, in order to do this, to use this solution, you need to create a driving video so you can record yourself doing something and you need to pick uh, an image that you want to use so I'm using Nikola Tesla's image so what I want to uh, do is actually uh, you know, put all the things from the drawing video and basically make Nikola Tesla move like I do so uh, in order to do that first thing that you need to do is run this command uh, to crop your video so uh, change location of the video with the path that you stored your driving video to and after that only uh, you need to call this command which is uh, basically just calling that demo uh, pi file and the important thing is to put the correct configuration uh, use the correct path to uh, model that is the checkpoint option and uh, provide location of the driving video and the source image. All of this can be done uh, from Google Colab as well. So here is the, the notebook that you can use. Uh, in an essence, uh, what you need to do is just clone this and mount your Google Drive. And once that is done, you need to upload your image and driving video to Drive as well as uh, the pre-trained model. So make sure that your image and video contains only face for the best results. And for that, you can use FFMPG to crop your video if you need to. And the only thing that you need to do is run uh, this piece of code, which is doing pretty much the same thing we did. Uh, 
also running the, uh, the demo.py so you will uh, see your results here and here is what we get after we do this so here are the results of this process as you can see it looks really interesting and uh, we've done it in a um, couple just couple of minutes so yeah congratulations now you know how to build deep fake we live in a weird age as you were able to see it is getting easier and easier to create deep fake videos and fake news and to distribute them it is getting harder and harder to realize what is truth and what is not and we can not trust our senses anymore and even though deep fake detectors are being built as well the information gap that they can detect is getting smaller and smaller so one advice for the end of this video be skeptical take every information that you get with a grain of salt uh, because things might not be how they seem so thank you for watching and see you in the next video